guys and welcome back to another Doctor Who action figure review. Today I'm taking a look at another of the new action figure sets exclusive to B&M stores in the UK and that's the 1970s collector set featuring the Brigadier, the Doctor and an Auton. So the packaging is the same as the sets from previous years, a window box displaying the figures and featuring the collector range packaging, with the white TV movie logo and the orangey pinkish space background with diamond motif. Out of the box, the first thing to note is that these are three entirely new variants. Repaints, but still variations that we've not seen before. So I'm going chronologically and starting with the Brigadier, which first appeared in this uniform in The Invasion, 1968, and then throughout John Pertwee's first season in 1970. The figure uses the Captain Jack Harkness base from way back in 2006, and overall, it's a good fit. The articulation is a little more limited, with swivel joints at the neck, shoulders, elbows, wrists, waist and knees, and then articulation at the hip, allowing the legs to move forward and out to the sides. Detail-wise, they've done a really nice job with the Captain Jack body. The head has been taken from the Brigadier in the Claws of Axos set, and the paint apps are pretty good on the whole. The hair has a slight grey in it that helps accentuate the details of the sculpt, but the eyes are a bit too black, and they sort of make him seem like he's a bit dead behind the eyes. Also, the details of the unit badge on the beret have been super simplified to a cream and grey circle compared to the lettering and checkered detail of the Claws of Axos set. The body has been painted to closely match the uniform seen in those early unit stories, and additional details such as the red rope and the badges have been painted on. Sadly, you can still see the RAF badge from the Captain Jack sculpt underneath those badges, but for the most part it's not too noticeable. Additional details such as the gold and red badges on the epaulettes are a really nice touch, and they have done their best to work with the sculpt at hand by painting the open shirt and cravat the same colours as the closed shirt and tie worn by the brig. Sadly, there's no unit badge on the figure's arm, but that is no doubt for the same reason we don't see it on the hat. Too expensive on a modest budget. But honestly, it's a nice variant. Sure, the figure has a cravat and an open shirt compared to the lapels, shirt and tie of the real outfit, but it's a very close approximation, and it's nice to have another era of the Brigadier's career filled in. On to the Auton from Terror of the Autons now, which reuses the sculpt from the Forbidden Planet exclusive Auton from the Spearhead from Space that was featured in the Enemies of the Third Doctor set, which in turn was modified from the Captain Jack Harkness body, which was just reused on the Brigadier. Whew, this is getting like Inception with toy sculpts. So it therefore features the same articulation as the Brigadier. Detail-wise, it's pretty damn accurate. The body is spot on in terms of sculpt and colour. They even painted the scarf a lighter shade of grey, like in the episode. The only thing they really could have done was to paint the buckle. The gun hand is removable, as per the previous Auton, so you can swap and change between the two. Sadly, the sculpt here has lost those details accentuated by the paint apps on the other version, and this is just a base blue. It's worth noting that the outfit isn't painted grey, but the plastic has been moulded in the colour, which does make it feel a little bit cheaper. The same can be said of the head and the hands, but that actually works in the toy's favour, because it is supposed to be a plastic man. Obviously, the head sculpt doesn't match the almost featureless look of the Autons in that story, but a slight wash around the mouth and the eyes help the details to pop. So again, a very successful repaint. Finally, we have the fourth Doctor from the Talons of Wang Chiang, a figure no one expected to see in a B&M set. It's a figure that people have wanted for a long time, because it comes from one of the most popular Doctor Who stories and features a lovely one-off look for the usually scarf-wearing fourth Doctor. So how have they managed this? Well, they've used a third Doctor body, which offers success in some areas, but shortcomings in others. This is the most articulated figure in the set, featuring swivel joints at the neck, shoulders, biceps, elbows, wrists, waist, thighs and knees, along with legs that can go forward and to the sides at the hip. And yes, you can pop his head off. The head sculpt is the standard solemn head seen on previous figures, and the paint apps are great. Neat eyes and lips and a range of washes on the hair to add to the detail of the sculpt. The Inverness cape has been repainted with the same houndstooth pattern from the show, and it looks really good. The lines are generally crisp, and the cape is pliable to make it easy to remove, more so than any previous Third Doctor cape, which is a massive bonus. The body is where it gets interesting. It uses the Carnival of Monsters third Doctor, and so we get a few discrepancies. On the top half, you'll notice the frills of the third Doctor's shirt, painted to match the jacket, and the grey gloved hands are painted over the third Doctor's, so you can still see the details like the rings and fingernails. 
Thankfully, it's a small gripe and is otherwise unnoticeable. The torso actually features entirely new tooling, which is unheard of in a B&M set. They've removed the plug-in cravat and frills piece and replaced it with a new waistcoat and tie. It even has a button sculpted on it. You can just about see where the waistcoat goes over the collar of the shirt, but otherwise it does a great job. The paint apps here aren't great, as the tie hasn't been painted particularly well, which seems to be a common issue across all of the sets. Also, the waistcoat is just a flat grey, not a dark brown with the lighter brown circles, as per the actual costume. I guess that was a sacrifice for tooling a new piece to make the figure work. Finally, we have my biggest bugbear with the figure, the legs. Yes, your eyes don't deceive you. They've used boot legs of the third Doctor and painted grey over the boots to make them look like trousers. Now this baffles me, because they have put wee legs with trousers and shoes. Perhaps there's some crazy reason to do with using moulds and tooling that I can't begin to fathom, but this is a bit of a leap in credulity, even for a B&M set. However, what I will say is that with the cloak on you can hide the legs, and it's honestly not that noticeable. It just seems crazy because you know what lies beneath his coat. Honestly, despite being the most Frankenstein's monster of all the B&M figures, it still works. Just about. If that waistcoat had some better paint apps, it would have been even better. But in hand, it does a good job of filling in that space next to Magnus Greel and Mr. Sin. The real downfall is the lack of his hat, but I may try and fashion my own at some point. Now I just need a massive rat. Overall, I think this is a great set. Okay, there are some shortcomings and the fourth Doctor suffers more than others, but overall they've done a really good job with the sculpts that they have to hand. The Auton is great, I actually really like the Brigadier, and even the fourth Doctor is nice to have despite the issues. So for $16.99, you can't really go wrong, particularly if you've missed out on the Auton and the Brigadier from previous sets. So thanks for watching guys, I hope this has been useful, and I'll be back soon to review more from the new B&M sets.